Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, as usual on Wednesday, we have the question and answer session on Instagram Live. So I am publishing here the most interesting questions. If you have any comments to these questions or answers, then you are always invited to comment below. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see the similar videos in the future, please click the subscribe button with the bell notification and enjoy the video. First question we have here is the Can Navamsha tell about marriage life? Uh, if you see the Rasi chart, the seventh house, seven Lord Venus, it will show more what is your attitude, how you are trying, how you are acting in the relationships. Why the Navamsha will show more about the karma of married life. What, how, how the, how finally uh, your married life will look like. So you need to consult Navamsha for that. How to know the foreign travel in the chart. Okay. What we are doing is there are a few houses which we need to check and few planets which are very uh, and also a few signs, right? So when we start with the houses, then we have to check 12th house. This is the standard planet for the foreign travel, 12th house. Then we have a 9th house. 9th house shows uh, foreign travel as uh, as opposition to the 3rd house, which shows the short travel. So the 3rd house normally shows short travels. The 9th house shows the longer travels. And the 12th house basically means that I am moving out because the lagna means where I am. So the 12th house is like the loss of where I am now. We can also see, for example, the 3rd house in similar mother that the 4th house is my property, is my place. So the 12th house from the 4th will be the 3rd house. So the 3rd house is showing where, 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 the loss of my property, right? The loss of where I am, loss of my house. So the third house can show loss of my houses, property, ve vehicles, uh, luxuries, any, and even the peace of mind. Therefore, the Parashara says that third house is the house of Dushchikya Bhava, which means that the bad thoughts, right? So the bad thoughts are in the third house because this is like a loss of peace. A uh, very important uh, house to check is the Badaka house, right? So the Badaka house, uh, when the Dasha comes, can also activate the foreign travel. So uh, what is the Badaka house? The Badaka for a movable Lagnas, this is the 11th house. For a Stira Lagnas, for a fix, this is the 9th house. For the dual Lagnas, this is the 7th house, right? So uh, these houses, this house, when activated through a Dasha, can also activate uh, foreign travel. Something very simple, but this also work wonders, is uh, you can check tent from the moon. The tent from the moon basically also have a strong to say when you will uh, live, because that is the strong force of work, which can pull you towards different direction, especially if your life is following the uh, the work, right? If, if for you the work is very important and um, you will take the choices, the, 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 the place consideration is based on your work, then definitely you can check the tent from moon. Now the Shara Valley says if the tent from moon is related to Mars, then uh, you can go abroad or you can live abroad. If tent from moon is related to Chara Rashis, the movable signs, then also you can live abroad. So that is also very interesting and very intriguing part um, which works wonders, right? For example, in my case, I have tent from moon Venus and Venus is a movable sign. So I'm living abroad, right? This is with Saturn uh, exalted. So I'm living in the West from my birth country. See the tent from the moon, see if it has any connection to Mars or a movable sign, then this can show that you are living or you should live abroad, basically. It shows that you are where you can get food, basically, that is showing the answer to this. And this influence, in this impact our our uh, place of stay in the big way. When Sadashati is good. So what is Sadashati? Sadashati is when we have moon in transit in the Gochara. Gochara is transit in 12th, 1st or 2nd from the moon. Normally people, most of the people are using the reference point as the moon in the Rasi chart, but our school is following the Nadis, who is saying that we should rather see the point of reference as the moon in the Navamsha. So what we are doing is that we are checking the Saturn position, Saturn transits in the Rashi, but we are seeing that from moon in the Navamsha. So when Saturn is under such transit, normally they say it brings some kind of challenges. If it's in 12, it's more to our uh, married life in first health, second work. But this is at the basic level understanding. But if we go farther, if we want to understand Sadashati more, basically it means that the value is brought to your life. Value means change. So it's like a wind of change. Wind of change is coming. 
And um, in the Rasi chart, if you if you experience the Sadashati in the Rasi chart, it's more related to your health. Uh, in the Navamsha, it's general, it's something more deep. Now, when you know that there is some change, for example, 12th house may show the relationship. You can also see in other Vargas the Sadashati. But when you know that something is changing, then, then it means that you are obliged to see the Dasha. It's, it's imperative for you to see the Dasha what is the dasha doing? Is it a good change or a bad change? So basically, the most, I would say, secure or most, uh, what I see is working very nice with Sadeshati is that you are treating us as some wind of change. You know when the change is coming. You are using basically the nadi, the Sadeshati, based on the moon position in the Namamsha. And then you are using the dasha to understand what is really going on. So that is how we are using the sadashati in tradition. Why there are so many kundalis? So basically it's a vargas, right? By kundalis you mean vargas. So the vargas are the source of uh, biggest problems and biggest fun for astrologers because they, what they are showing is that they are showing the separate areas of life. So in the Rasi chart, for example, in the fourth house, you have mother, mind, property, you have also a car, right? You have your school. Many things are in fourth house. So for example, if you have affliction there, right? Then what it shows, what is the problem, right? So normally the fourth house in the Rasi chart, it shows your security, right? Your security, your trust. But your trust and security, you will see, is connected, for example, to property. Uh, fourth house also shows happiness. So you are happy when you have uh, luxuries, right? And these luxuries are in D16, right? So your happiness is in D27, right? Your education is in D24. So these various environments, they can influence your security, your happiness. So when you have a malefic in D4, we are not sure from where it comes, right? So you need to check your environment to be sure where is the source of blessing of problem. With, without this kundalis, as you call them, without this varga charts, you cannot be sure what's going on uh, beside, beyond you, beyond your subjectivity. Right? This is really the blessings of Vedic astrology. This is the main, I would say, difference between the Vedic and Western astrology, that we have those vargas, we have those divisional charts in which we have uh, insight into our environment. Without that, basically, we could uh, restrict astrology to a very psychological approach. One, there is the humanistic ap astrology, the, as they call it in the West. So this is astrology, which is uh, with, with, which is not touching any uh, topics related to karma or determinism or anything which is besides you. It only describes your character, your personality, your psychology. So this is the D1, right? But but if you but if you have Varga charts, now comes this karmic astrology. With the Varga charts, with the divisional charts, the event astrology starts. The karmic, the 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 deterministic astrology starts because now you have information about your environment. Right? So this is also the paradigm of Vedic astrology, which means that it controls your external world. Right? There are many astrologers in the West which say that the astrology is not related to anything, uh, anything outside you. It's, it's all about your psychology, it's about your potential strength, weaknesses, about your character, how you can increase your potentials. But the Vedic astrology, maybe for some people, therefore, it's a little bit scary because it is uh, it is uh, giving us insights into this, our environment. And therefore, it's more karmic astrology, it's deterministic astrology. And therefore, for some people, it's a, this is a source of excitement and, and they dwell deep into these topics. And for some people, this may be a little bit scary, right? People who have problems with such uh, understanding or perspective that some part of their lives may be already written or determined at the time of birth or even before this perspective may be a little bit scary for them and uh, therefore they are rather going to uh, western astrologers or psychology based or centered uh, uh, astrologers which is 
than the Rasi chart because the Rasi chart, the main chart, shows you how you are getting the impact from the environment, whilst the Varga chart shows the environment itself. Hope that answers your questions, right? Okay. Uh, someone is asking, what does Venus as Atmakaraka in the Libra in the fourth house means, right? So what it means, I would say that to answer these questions, we would need to divide this answer to three parts. One part would be Venus Atmakaraka. The second part would be Venus having Digbala in the fourth house right? And the third house and the third thing will be Venus in the fourth house in Libra as the Mahapurusha. So answering the first thing is that when Venus is at Makaraka, then normally there are some challenges when it comes to relationship, right? Because the lessons for the soul will be coming from relationship. So now you can find which yogas are related to the Venus, what is really going on, where are the afflictions, and then you can uh, have the answer, what can be the challenge when it comes to relationship. Now, the second part of question, uh, having a digbala. When Venus having have a digbala in the fourth house, it's great. It basically brings the uh, Agni Devata blessing. So it's like having the Agni in the fourth house. So this normally brings a very high intelligence, very sharp intelligence. What is the Mahapurusha Yoga? Is, is that when the Tattva planet, which is the uh, from the Mars, right, to the Saturn. So it's, it's, it's Mars, uh, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus and Saturn. These five planets are the Taragrahas, they are the Tattva Grahas. When they are strong, so in exaltation or in own sign, and when they are in Kendra, then it's said that these planets, they are the Mahapurusha. So you are like the big shot, you are like a big guy, right? But this normally we are using to find the direction. What is the direction of the person? So this yoga can overshadow the whole chart, right? So now this Venus is very important. This shows the direction. Someone asked also, what if the 12 from Atmakaraka is debilitated? Then it can show that uh, the form you can worship is of Mahavidya, so of Devi, right? So depending what planet is that, you can choose that form of Mahavidya, right? So that will be the question, what if the 12 from Atmakaraka is debilitated, right? So if you have Mercury in Pisces there, then it means the Parashundari. If you have Moon debilitated there, then it is Bhuvaneshvari, right? So you are basically this debilitation. We are, the, the thing is that we are approaching the debilitation state through the Mahavidya because it means that the planet is very much like in the mud, right? It's very much down. It, it's in the darkness, some kind of darkness. And only Devi, it can go to that darkness and take you back. So therefore, it shows that in that mood, in that karmic mood which is there we can uh, really uh, change uh, and provide the remedies uh, when we refer to the uh, mother divine or the devi so how is the atmakaraka dasha so just to explain what it is atmakaraka is the planet which has highest degree and the dasha is the planet which is working uh, for some time right like venus have tw 20 years uh, sun has the sixth years, the moon has the 10 years in the Vimsho tree, right? The Ashto tree or other dashas will have different periods, but this is showing uh, the planet which is activated, right? In which dasha you are means what planet is working in on your karmic level in your life, right? So if the planet which is working in your chart is having the highest degree, which is the Atmakaraka, that, that means that you are in the Atmakaraka Dasha. So this normally is negative Dasha because Atmakaraka wants us to teach something and we are learning by mistakes, we are learning by going through some ego challenges basically. So normally the Atmakara is showing where is something burning in our chart, where we have to focus, where we are vulnerable, what part of our life is uh, having those, where is our weakness? What is, where we can also be biased? Because there is a lot of emotions, as you may uh, imagine, uh, the Atmakaraka part shows where we are engaged emotionally, right? So if the Atmakaraka Dasha is going on, then it means that 
now comes the time for the soul to learn something, right? So normally it's, unless the Atmakaraka has super good yogas, which then can show some kind of Raja yoga or success yoga, normally it shows that this is now the time for learning. And we learn from the Karaka of the Atmakaraka. So for example, if it's Venus, then it will be relationship. And we also are learning by the lodge, the houses we are, which are loaded by the Atmakaraka. So for example, my Atmakaraka is loading seven and 10, I have Jupiter at Makarka in the fifth house and it's 10 and 7. So my lessons will be related to the seventh house of relationship and the tenth house of work. So can a retro planet be an Atma Karaka? Yes. Retro is the Vakri. So uh, if you have Atma Karaka planet, this is the highest degree planet, and you can have retrograde Atma Karaka. Yes. If the question was basically, I think your question was how we count. Atmakaraka when the planet is retrograde. So my answer to this question is you are you are you are just ignoring it when you are calculating the Atmakaraka. It doesn't play any role if the planet is Vakri or not. You are always taking the planet with this with the highest degrees. The only exception is Rahu, right? For Rahu, you have to first deduct the degrees from 30 degrees, right? So when, for example, Rahu have seven degrees, then treat it as it would have 23 degrees, right? If Rahu has 29 degrees, then treat it as one degree, right? And then calculate which is uh, which planet has the highest degree. So when you want to understand which what is your Atmakaraka planet, then first what you do is deduct the degrees of Rahu from 30, right? So for example, my like my Rahu has nine degree, then I would say it's 21 degrees. Degree, right? And then calculate all the planets, right? So when the Rahu is very early to the sign, for example, when Rahu has like zero degree and something, it is very high chance it will become Atmakaraka because if we deduct this from 30, it will be 29 something. So unless you have a planet which has 29 something more, then the Rahu will be at Makaraka. How the Vakri planets behaves. How the Vakri planet behave, all right? So first of all, what is Vakri? Vakri means retrograde. So sometimes the planet, they have uh, something like illusionary, they go backwards, right? So this this illusion movement this 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 movement based on our perception uh when it's when the planet is going backward it is called retrograde and in sanskrit this means vakri what we are doing is that we are treating as if the sign is in the opposite sign but only when it comes to the sign to understand the strength of the planet but the planet stays when it comes to houses it stays in that position right and does the planet in any house activate house opposite to it? Every planet except Ketu will aspect the planet which is in the seventh house from its position. So we could say that this is how it activates it, right? By Graha Drishti, which means that desire. So basically when the planet is in the Lagna, it desires the thing which are in the seventh house. So this relationship between the first and seventh when we talk about the Graha Drishti is the Icha, right? So we are basically having the desire for the seventh house. So whatever planet is activating, uh, aspecting, whatever planet is aspecting by Graha Drishti, like for example, in Vimshotri Dasha, this will activate by the aspect. It will influence. Yeah, so there is influence, uh, except Ketu. The Ketu doesn't have the Graha Drishti. So that would be the answer. What is the Palana Devata and the remedy for this? Palana Devata is one of the four main deities we can find in the Navamsa chart and they are all related to helping us in this world starting from the most important one it is the Ishtadeva Ishtadevata Ishtadevata is the uh, devata we can find in 12th house from Karakamsha Karakamsha is the placement of Atma Karaka in the Navamsha chart so it's quite a little bit advanced for uh, beginners but there is a point in the astrological chart which is showing the Devata, which is helping us in the spiritual sadhana, in the spiritual practice. So basically the first one is 12 from Atmakaraka in the Navamsa chart. Atmakaraka is the planet which, is, which has the highest degree and the uh, Navamsa chart is the special chart for uh, to see the fortune and to see the strength of the planet but also uh, navamsha is very important to indicate what is the 
uh, what are the relationship we have with the absolute, with the God and so on. So one of them is the uh, Palana Devata. So Palana Devata is the form of God which is related to uh, feeding us. So basically it is in the sixth from the Amatya Karaka. So we have to find first the planet which is the Amatya Karaka. Amatya Karaka is the second one planet in the degrees. So the first one, the planet which has highest degrees called Atma Karaka. The second one is Amatya Karaka. And then we have to find sixth house from this planet in the Navamsha. And this will show us which form of absolute, which form of God will get, provide us with the food to the table, basically. So this is how we are finding this uh, form of, of God, right? So uh, the Ishta Devata is 12 from Atmakaraka in the Navamsha. Then we have Dharma Devata, which is very important. Uh, it is to be found in the, the ninth house from the uh, Atmakaraka in Dinavamsha. And there is also the Guru Devata. It is related to a Bratri Karaka in Dinavamsha. Now, Bratri Karaka is the planet which is the third in the order. So Atma Karaka has the highest degree. Then we have Amatya Karaka, which is the second one. And then we have the third one, which is Bratri Karaka. And this is the form is called Guru Devata. It is basic someone who is helping us uh, to get the knowledge. So how we can get the knowledge, how we can uh, also having the protection of someone on the spiritual path. Th th this is probably the only way, only objective way to find which form of God is uh, helping us because for spiritual people for people who are performing the sadhana or some kind of spiritual upliftment they try to uh, uplift the consciousness by any form of spiritual practice so for these people uh, these questions will be of utmost importance some people they have some intuitive um is they have some intuition what what it can be sometimes they find some attraction to some specific particular form of god for example um one can say oh i feel i have a specific attraction to narasim hadev or i have a specific uh, attraction to chaitanya or nityananda mahaprabhu or to jagannath or to any form of god i feel that when i'm doing these mantras then i'm really feeling something it's something else it's really good but the problem with such things is that our intuition is very hard to distinguish uh, from our mind from our mental thing so these uh, these devatas they are operating on the level of the soul because we are counting them from the chara karaka level we are counting them from atma karaka from amatya karaka from bratri karaka so they are on uh, on the level of the soul very deep whilst our intuitions what we like what are our preferences they can be on the manas level right so we have this uh, in, we have this manas uh, we have the buddhi which is intelligence we have ahamkara which is the ego and then we have the uh, spirit which is some some kind of transitory between the mind and the soul and then we have the soul we have the atma right so this attraction this attraction can be on the mental level so without astrology uh, and if we are not on the highest level of the sadhana it may be really difficult to uh, find that form which can really help us in those uh, spiritual practices i would say that this is also one very important point proves that astrology is not only a tool for materialistic person who only wants to car and wife and better job and uh, find a husband and when the child will be born and all such things but the astrology is working on all levels so it can also help us with uh, d20 and d24 so d20 is related to our spiritual upliftment when it comes to our upasana brihad parashara horashastra says that the Vimshamsa chart, which is the D20 chart, is showing our Upasana. Upasana means that we are, uh, so we are doing, we are performing some kind of spiritual practice. And based on that Vimshamsa, we can know which type of spiritual practice is uh, best for us. Is it pranayam? Is it meditation? Is it some other form of practice? Maybe a team, uh, maybe doing something in the group, maybe the Kirtana, right? Prashna Marga says that the seventh house controls the Kirtana. The tenth house have to do with any type of missionary activity and the Siddhamsha is about the education so 
uh, Vedic astrology is not only telling us about this mundane level of existence, which is nevertheless very important, uh, but also is showing us the higher, uh, higher things like education, which is the Jnana of Siddhamsha and the Vigyana or the spiritual knowledge of the D20 chart of the Vimshamsa chart. So it penetrates all the level of existence. Therefore, the sixth from Amatya Karaka is showing it's not only the job, it's not only, we cannot reduce it to job, it's really form of protection we are gaining from the Mahavidya, we can say, right? So this is form, basically the form of Mahavidya. So based on this planet, which is sitting in the sixth from Amatya Karaka, we can also found which which part of Mahavidya is giving us the, the food uh, to the table, right? So this is someone who is protecting us, someone who is feeding us, like the mother. Sun is Matangi, right? The moon is Bhuvaneshwari, Mars is Bagalamukhi, Mercury is Parashundari, uh, Jupiter will be Tara. Then we have Venus, Kamalatmika, Saturn is Kali, Rahu is Chinnamasta, and Ketu is Dumavati. So these are the Mahavidyas related to sixth from Amatya Karaka. Very important is also Dharma Devata. Dharma Devata is ninth house from the Atma Karaka in the Navamsa chart. So ninth from Atma Karaka in the Navamsa chart is showing Dharma Devata, someone who is uh, protecting us in uh, crossing the life in the journey of life, because we can say that this life is like a journey, and the ninth from Atma Karaka is the form of God, which is giving us protection in that journey. So this is ninth from Atma Karaka. That whilst the twelfth house from Atma Karaka in the Navamsha is more related to who is helping us in a liberation from this world. So I don't know if we are on that level already uh, of liberation. If we just want to be liberated from the world, then we can go to the 12th house from Atma Karaka, whilst when we want to have some kind of protection in this spiritual life, it's more about 9th from Atma Karaka. And what is very interesting, and it always works, it's so great principle, is that if you see when you will have some important meeting of a guru or some spiritual person or someone who is really uh, connected to protecting us on the spiritual level, always the time when we meet such person or uh, the, when we have some initiation or any type of spiritual practice, this is also always related to the ninth house from the Atma Karaka. And, and this, is, this is so, so interesting concept because it shows when our soul finds protection. Because ninth from Atma Karaka is showing who is protecting our soul, whom to worship to increase education marks. We need to open our Siddhamsa chart. So we know that on the basic level of the fourth house, we are always worshiping, worshiping Ganesha, right? And we can choose the form of Ganesha based on our ascendant. There, is our, there are 12 forms of Ganesha, and these are related to a specific uh, science. They are, uh, I think this is given by Narada Muni. And uh, we can then find the ascendant sign, and we can uh, worship that form of Ganesha. So that is what we are doing in our, our parampara. This is, but we can go even deeper. There are specific remedies related to the uh, Siddhamsa chart, and then there you have to find what dasha you are having now. And uh, by seeing this sign of the dasha from various planets, then you can choose whom to worship, right? So you can worship Skanda, you can worship uh, Kartikeya, you can worship Ganesha, you can worship Sarasvati. Also depends what you want to increase. Because your Siddhamsha, you may have problems in education on various levels, right? There can be problems related to digestion of knowledge. They may be problems related to teachers. They may be problems related to culture, how you speak, how you, uh, how you are uh, manifesting the knowledge. Also, how you are digesting the knowledge, right? For example, seven from Mercury shows how you are digesting the knowledge. So first, what we are doing normally is that we are trying to find what is your problem in the education, and then we are uh, giving the remedies. So the standard answer is Ganesha and then we are worshipping Ganesha based on the moon but also we can find the Ganesha uh, Devata based on the Lagna sign this is the standard practice just to open us to the knowledge and the, the, 
this is like a vitamin C, I would say. So this is something which is increasing our potentials, which is giving us the, uh, the, the blessings. But for real solution of the problems, we are uh, we are uh, f uh, giving the remedies based on the Sidamsha, based on Dasha and position of the plants from the chart. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for attendance. Thanks a lot for your nice questions. Uh, it was really a pleasure again to be with you. I hope we will meet again on the next Wednesday. It's our questions answer day and we can uh, investigate further uh, Vedic astrology. So stay tuned and I wish you all the best.